When it comes to the port holes for the ship, my viewers have been helping me quite a lot. Firstly, they helped me find the name of these arcs that go above the port hole. They're called Riggles, spelt R-I-G-O-L. And then another viewer pointed out that I probably didn't need to be trying to remake them out of lead wire, and that I probably have some port holes in my stash of old photo etch. And it turns out that that viewer was in fact correct. I have a sheet of port holes from the Missouri, the Missouri kit that I built is a very old kit, it's a 1980s kit, and it didn't have much detail in it at all. So the super detail upgrade kit that I used included portals to add portals onto the kit because, well, the kit didn't have any portals. Anyways, they provided more portals than were required, so I was able to repurpose those on this kit. That does mean that I once again need to be working on the first level of the superstructure and I will be sanding off these lead wire wriggles. Fortunately, lead is very soft, so this is quite easy to achieve. I file it down with my bar file and then smooth off the surface using 500 grit sandpaper. The photo edge portholes that I'll be using have a photo edge circle representing the frame of the portal and then an arc above that representing the wriggle. To install them, it's a matter of aligning the circular frame with the hole for the portal in the side of the superstructure. This is not as easy as it sounds. It's quite difficult to perfectly align the circle and the hole, and then also to keep the wriggle centered above the portal. It has a tendency to want to slide off to one side or the other, or for the hole to not align properly with the frame. I found that the best way to go about installing them was to apply a very small amount of extra thick super glue to the back of the photo edge part, and then position it on the kit. It doesn't set immediately and it gives me just a little bit of time to be able to position the portal. But sometimes I don't get it quite right the first time and then I have to reattempt this multiple times. Once it is in the correct position, I just leave it for a few seconds and the glue bonds it in place. These are always going to be fairly delicate parts since they are so small and there's just not a lot of surface area for them to attach to the kit. But they are flat and against the side of the ship and it's not an area that it's going to really receive any handling. As long as they're stuck down well enough so that they don't fall off when they get brushed past, I think it'll be fine. I also realize that these portholes will look slightly different to the other portholes on the ship, but as long as they're not too close to each other, I don't think that's going to be very noticeable. And I do have to admit, the photo edge portholes do look better than my lead wire wriggles, which I still think look better than the originally molded plastic wriggles that had been provided with this kit. This row of 10 portholes has a smaller hole than for the rest of the portholes on the model. So I can't use the same photo etch ring. It's going to be too big. There'll be a bit of plastic on the inner side of it that will look odd. So in this case, I need to remove the photo etch ring from the wriggle and then install the wriggle above the porthole. Since these portholes are intended to be different, I think it'll look fine to have a smaller porthole without a frame next to a larger porthole with a frame. This is rather tedious work and I've done this now multiple times. I'm very ready to be done with this area of the ship. You probably have had enough of watching it as well. So it's all hope that this is the last time we have to look at this. After completing the port side of the ship, I move on to the starboard side of the ship. At this point, I've had a little bit more practice and it goes a bit more smoothly, but nevertheless, it was rather tedious and I'm glad that it is done. This video is part of a build series on the HMS hood. If you are enjoying this video and would like to see other videos in the build series, then follow the link to the playlist in the cards above. If you have any questions that you would like me to answer, then feel free to post them in the comment section below. And don't forget to subscribe to support the channel. Now that the portholes and their wriggles are hopefully set and that that won't need to be adjusted yet again, I can move on to something different. And that is the installation of the photo edge hatches on the aft of the superstructure. These hatches come in two versions, a closed version D12 and an open version D14. I will be using D12 because I want the hatches to be closed. I prefer that look. You can also see in this image something that is a little bit comical. The nameplate hood, they have it backwards. They clearly flipped the starboard side to make a mirror image of it for the port side. And in doing so, they also flipped the name of the ship, the nameplate. So you have here do instead of hood. And while you might think that's not much of a problem because you could just flip do into hood, 
Well, you actually can't because D is not a symmetrical letter, unfortunately. And the D is also etched the wrong way. Which means I either have to try and salvage this piece of photo etch by cutting off the D, flipping it around, and then reinstalling it in place. Or you can get a decal printed, which is the option that I went. It's a simple thing to get a decal printed in black text that says hood with the same spacing and font. So I've done that. This means that I'll not be using the photo etch nameplate. I'll be using a decal, but I won't be installing that now. I'll just be installing the closed hatches. Once again, I'll be using extra thick super glue to install the photo etch onto the model. However, uh, this time I will be applying the glue to the model instead of the photo etch. To do that, I pick up a good dollop of extra thick super glue with a wire and then apply it to the perimeter of the opening for the hatch. With the super glue in place, I then pick up the hatch and install it over the hole. I would say the most difficult part for installing these hatches is to ensure that they're all at the same height and level. Both of those problems I'm solving using the same reference. I'm trying to get it to sit as close to the bottom edge as possible. So if I have the hatch just a little bit too high, you'll see an opening at the bottom below the hatch. And if I push the hatch down too low, then I risk the hatches being at different heights. And if they are too different in their heights, then that will make them look rather odd. Apart from those minor complications, this photo etch is quite easy to install. So after completing the starboard side of the ship, I then repeat the process on the port side of the ship. Apart from the nameplate, which I won't be using, and two sets of staircases, that I will not install at this time, that is all of the photo etch. I'm not gonna install those staircases at this time because I think those staircases will be quite exposed and I don't wanna damage them. Because they are so exposed, they are something that I can quite easily install at a later time, so there's no need to rush into putting them on right now. So I'll move on to painting what I have installed today. Once again, and I'm sure you are as tired of seeing this as I am of doing this, I paint the side of the ship in XF53. This is the color that I'm using to represent the gray for Hood's superstructure. After spraying all of the photo etch in the same color as the hull, I can have another look at it and see what the effect is like. And I am quite happy. I think this has turned out quite well. And I am hopeful that I will not have to revisit this area of the ship. That is it for this video. In the next video, I will hopefully move on and start installing the components on the deck and the side of the hull. If you would like to support this channel or see how this ship looks when it is completed, then please subscribe. Thanks for watching. Cheers.